Mario Lives. With over 250 titles in the Mario Brothers franchise, Bowser has yet to defeat Mario. Of course, there are plenty of obstacles set to thwart Mario on his quest to rescue Princess Peach, but are any of them particularly deadly? The Koopa Troopas are easily defeated by rendering them shellless, PD Piranha is avoidable, Bullet Bills are slow moving and fairly predictable, Dry Bones are, well, dry and fall apart with a single stomp to the head, and even the Boos have their weaknesses. While the Koopa Castles are daunting, they're not particularly difficult to traverse, especially considering that Mario is a veteran dungeon crawler. He's definitely not a squishy level 1 mage. With all of the low level bad guys at Bowser's disposal, if outright killing Mario were his main goal in life, he'd be doing a terrible job of succeeding with his devious plan. Considering the numerous titles in the Mario franchise, Bowser has had plenty of opportunities to do away with the pesky plumber, and yet Mario lives on. Either Bowser's goal isn't to get rid of Mario permanently, or he's the biggest failure since Wile E. Coyote tried to capture and presumably eat the Roadrunner. Please defeat me. Bowser has a plethora of minions at his disposal. He has ridiculously intricate castles outfitted with deadly traps, lava, and dry bones set up to keep out meddling plumbers and mushroom people. He has a powerful Magikoopa on his side, but Mario still manages to defeat him and rescue Princess Peach in every game. Astute players will also note the presence of self-defeating mechanisms inside each Bowser castle as well. The lever located behind Bowser in multiple castle levels is easily accessed by Mario. Once the lever has been pulled, the bridge disappears and Bowser can be seen dropping into the lava below. One would think that Bowser would have learned his lesson after the first time Mario used his own bridge lever against him, but apparently not. Why would Bowser create weapons that could be used against himself in order to defeat him? Perhaps instead of shuffling Mario off of this mortal coil and keeping Princess Peach hostage, Bowser has a different goal in mind. It could be that with all the camaraderie between Mario and pals, Bowser feels left out. One way to get attention, albeit negative attention, would be to consistently torment Mario and friends in order to draw attention to himself. It's possible that that Bowser, instead of being evil, is simply lonely. Castles galore. While it seems like Bowser's main source of entertainment is kidnapping Princess Peach, in reality, he appears to have a very active personal life outside of playing the villain to the Mushroom Kingdom. His endless supply of castles are evidence of that alone. Bowser's castles are far more intricate than the residences of Princess Peach. The Mushroom people may be skilled architects, but they are truly no match for the innovation present in a Bowser castle. From beautiful wood doors to large, open windows, the Bowser castles are not only masterpieces of construction, they're also dangerous. Not only does Bowser have numerous castles throughout the Mushroom Kingdom, but they are regularly destroyed by Mario and his cohorts in their attempts to rescue Princess Peach from Bowser's clutches. Bowser may not personally build each castle himself, but he, more than likely, designs them at the very least. Not to mention the fact that with all the castle destruction from the Mario Brothers, his castles have to be rebuilt regularly to maintain their structural integrity. Again, he may not personally work on each castle himself, but he is at least creating tons of construction jobs in the Mushroom Kingdom, and that has to count for something. Mr. and Mrs. Bowser While Nintendo may maintains that Bowser and Princess Peach are nothing more than a restraining order waiting to happen, as it turns out there may actually be more to the Bowser and Princess Peach saga. In Super Paper Mario, Count Black gave Bowser the day off as main villain in the Mario franchise. Count Black sought to bring forth the Chaos Heart so that he could open the void to destroy all dimensions. Just how did Count Black bring forth the Chaos Heart? Two words, unholy matrimony. By forcing Bowser and Princess Peach to get married, he fulfilled the prophecy wherein a princess must wed a monster in order to form the Chaos Heart. Heart. Count Black managed to succeed in this quest, a quest that Bowser had presumably failed at for many years if marrying Princess Peach were his true intention. While Princess Peach doesn't seem to be content with marrying Bowser, at the end of Super Paper Mario she doesn't divorce him either. It's likely that the marriage wasn't completely legal seeing as how Count Black basically forced them to wed against their will, but one would think that would be a main concern not only to Peach but Bowser as well. Let's face it, with all those castles he's essentially a real estate mogul. Easy Hostage when most people think of being held hostage, images of dark dungeons come to mind. Most likely prisoners will be held against their will, starved, and treated very poorly. That's usually par for the course when it comes to any kidnapping situation. In the case of Bowser and Princess Peach, the situation appears to play out a lot differently. Bowser has kidnapped Princess Peach countless times throughout the franchise, but she always seems to be in good shape after the fact. Her clothes are clean and pressed, her hair is impeccable, and her demeanor still remains cheerful in spite of all the abductions. She often has a room to herself, access to food, and a 
first-rate view of the Mushroom Kingdom from atop her private tower. Perhaps Princess Peach rests easy knowing that the Mario Brothers will surely save her for the umpteenth time, which would explain her delightful attitude. It doesn't, however, explain why Bowser treats his prisoner as though she's a guest at his five-star lava-filled castle. If Bowser had any ill will towards Princess Peach, he could easily throw her into the dungeons of one of his many castles, never to be seen again. In fact, that would probably be more beneficial than making sure she's treated to a shy guy prepared continental breakfast each morning of her abduction. Monarchy Princess Peach is, obviously, a princess, and typically that signifies that the kingdom being ruled over is a monarchy. However, Princess Peach looks nothing like the subject she rules over, so how did she ascend to the throne as the ruler of the Mushroom People and the other inhabitants of the kingdom? In fact, there are very few humans residing in the Mushroom Kingdom. In a nation of Koopas, Mushroom People, and Yoshis, it seems as though Princess Peach and her friends are suspiciously out of place. Not to mention, in some instances, it seems as though the Mushroom People and Yoshis tend to be servants to the few humans residing in the the Mushroom Kingdom, with Toad attending to Princess Peach's every need, and Yoshi oftentimes being callously abandoned by Mario in favor of an out-of-reach block, only to be summoned again saddle-ready for Mario to use another time. That said, Bowser doesn't look out of place when considering the other residents of the Mushroom Kingdom, and he does own quite a few castles of his own, enough for each of the Koopalings to inhabit. Perhaps Princess Peach has invaded the Mushroom Kingdom, and Bowser is only trying to retake his land and restore order to the kingdom that was taken from him. Differences aside. Appearing in over 100 games in the Mario franchise, it may seem that Bowser's number one priority is to kidnap Princess Peach at all costs. However, Bowser is not always the main villain within the Mushroom Kingdom, and has often put aside his differences with his sworn enemies, Mario and Luigi. In Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, Bowser is kicked out of his castle when a giant sword falls from the sky. The Smithy Gang has invaded the castle in order to take over the world. Bowser soon realizes that he will have to team up with Mario and friends to regain control over his castle. Super Paper Mario also sees Bowser join the ranks of the Mario Brothers in order to stop Count Black from destroying the world with a Chaos Heart. Of course, Bowser frequently joins the gang in other titles as well, such as Mario Kart, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and various Mario Sports games. If Bowser truly were a terrifying force in the Mushroom Kingdom, would Mario and his cohorts be playing games alongside him? Probably not. Allowing your sworn enemy to hang out on days off is probably counterproductive and somewhat risky. Loving Father Seven Koopalings made their first appearance in Super Mario Bros. 3 as Bowser's children, which was hinted at in the game manual with Morton referring to his father, presumably Bowser. Further confusing the matter, Bowser Jr. was introduced in Super Mario Sunshine, eventually leading Sigeru Miyamoto to state in 2012 that currently the seven Koopalings are merely minions, meaning that Bowser Jr. is his only biological son. Demotion of the Koopalings to mere minions aside, even if Bowser Jr. is the only true child of Bowser, it appears as though Bowser is a single father raising his son alone in the Mushroom Kingdom. In a cutscene from Super Mario Sunshine, Bowser has a heart-to-heart -heart with Bowser Jr., explaining that Princess Peach is not really his mom. Bowser seems genuinely saddened that he has to have this tough talk with his son. While Bowser Jr. already knows that Peach is not his mother, it's still touching that Bowser has the maturity to have this discussion with his son. Also, in spite of the Koopalings not being Bowser's biological children, he does seem to spend plenty of time with them. Bowser even goes as far as building castles for them to live in. If Bowser were a truly evil individual, this type of behavior behavior would be wildly out of character. Bowser the Orphan Bowser Jr. isn't the only member of the Bowser family with a lineage shrouded in mystery. Bowser's parents have never appeared within the Mario franchise, and Bowser's family life was only mentioned in passing in Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. In the game, it is mentioned that Kamek, the Magic Koopa, has raised Bowser himself since Bowser was a baby. It's not exactly clear how Kamek came into possession of a child, and in the past, most players have assumed that Kamek is merely one of Bowser's advisors. While it is possible that Kamek is actually Bowser's biological father, it has never been confirmed, so players are left to assume that he is, at least, acting as a foster parent to Bowser. Regardless of the true nature of their relationship, Kamek is a staple of Bowser's squad throughout the franchise. In Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, however, the nature of their relationship is called into question again. When Mallow's psychopath ability is used against a brainwashed Kamek, he thinks to himself, that's my child? Of course, in order to see this exchange, Bowser would have to be a member of your party, so it may be a scene that is missed by most players. Evil Kamek Given the fact that Bowser was raised by Kamek the Magic Koopa, is it any surprise that he tends to engage in questionable behavior? For players unfamiliar with Kamek's antics, he is a Koopa whose main source of entertainment is wreaking havoc and chaos in the Mushroom Kingdom. In Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, Kamek foresees in his crystal ball that the Mario Brothers will become a threat to the Koopas and decides to kidnap baby Mario and baby Luigi, attacking an innocent stork in the process. In Yoshi's Island DS, Kamek once again attempts to kidnap babies in order to obtain at least one of the seven star babies 
babies whose hearts contain unimaginable powers. Kamek makes another appearance in Yoshi's Woolly World, this time turning several Yoshis into Wonder Wool before placing them in a sack and attempting to kidnap them. With Kamek's penchant for kidnapping and causing problems throughout the Mushroom Kingdom, is it any surprise that Bowser grew up to think that this type of behavior is normal? In fact, with Kamek the Magikoopa's track record, who's to say that he was willingly put in charge to care for baby Bowser? Perhaps Kamek also kidnapped Bowser at some point and Bowser, being a baby at the time, simply doesn't remember his parents or the life he had prior to Kamek raising him. Is Bowser a real threat to the Mushroom Kingdom or is he simply misunderstood? Let us know what you think in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. Don't forget to check out our playlist. Thanks for watching.